Uh, that is how you uh, go about you know, downloading and deleting apps. And we can reorganize them and move them around the same way we reorganized tiles earlier on in the session if we want. It's kind of hard to drag them between the pages sometimes. If we want to drag Facebook to our home page, we can. Um, if we want to group iBooks and Kindle together, we can do that and move it to our home screen. Whatever you want to do to organize it, it will press home and it will stop working mode. So now we have all these apps. Um, we can use them, but that's going to be a, a lot of material to go into. We'll cover that at the end. Um, I want to go over how to use the internet, just to surf the internet on your device. Um, the Safari icon, which is down here at the bottom, is the web browser on your device. So if you click Safari, it will bring you to a very bland white screen like this. Um, if you are not connected to the internet, you're going to get an error when you try to type in an address. But let's just click in the URL bar and we'll type in www.google.com. And like I was mentioning earlier, you can see right now there's this .com button that we can use as a shortcut to type in .com. You don't have to, but it's there if you want it. And um, so now we can you know, search for whatever we want to. And we can use this just like we would use any other web browser. Um, it, hopefully, you all have experience using the internet. Um, if not, you, you can be with me later. And I, I can go through that with you too. Um, but there are some other things I wanted to go over. Some neat features of the web browser that you might not know about. Um, one of the first ones is zooming. Um, if you pinch the screen, you zoom in and out. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If you just take two fingers and you squeeze them together, or spread them apart. Um, you can go real close or you know, as far out as the page will let you go. And that is really, really useful, especially if you're on an iPhone or an iPod Touch and you're on a website and they have teeny tiny little text that is not designed for a mobile device. Um, you'll have to zoom in quite a bit to be able to read what they're saying. So know how to zoom in is very helpful. Um, we also have the top right here a search bar. Um, don't mix up the search bar with the URL bar. When you type into the search bar, it's basically just like doing a Google search. So if we type SBU into the search bar, it actually will do a Google search uh, for SBU and take us back to you know, the same page we were already at pretty much. Um, if you try to type in a Google search into the URL bar, um, I don't think it will like that very much. I don't, I don't know if, if it will let you lose track. Okay, it'll try to send you to SPU.com. So it doesn't really work for Google searching if you use the URL. Um, if you want to bookmark a page, say you really like the library's website, um, let's go to www.sbu.edu slash library. Okay, we're at the library's webpage now. And if you want to bookmark it, there is this little book icon at the top. Um, that is where you view your bookmarks. If you click this little arrow looking guy next to it, um, you get this little dialog that lets you uh, do stuff with this link. Um, we'll just put it as a bookmark for right now. And we'll hit save. And now if we click this little book icon at the top, we have our Southwest Baptist University Libraries link in there. Um, some other cool things we can do with this send button up here, you can email the link to someone. Um, we haven't set up email yet, so it won't work. Um, we can you know, put a post about this page on Facebook. Um, something else I wanted to show you is adding a link to it on your home screen. So we're going to click this Add to Home Screen button, and it's going to make a link to this. Uh, page on our on the home screen of our device, and we can drag this link around on the desktop, um, just like any app or anything like that. And when you click on it, it'll just take you straight to the page. So it's really handy if there's a favorite page that you you know want to jump to right away. And if you want to uh, view your history list in your browser. 
If you click that little book where the bookmarks are, um, I think you have to click it, and then there's this little clock part sort of at the bottom of it. And this shows us the pages we've been viewing. So if you close something and you want to get back to it, you can you know, click on that and it'll take us back to the page we were at earlier. Um, you can open multiple tabs in your browser. What, how to open a, a, um, a link in another tab, you touch your finger on the link and hold it there. And it brings up this little dialog. And you can do open a new tab. And now you can see up here we have another tab. And if we go, click on it, um, it has our web page on it. You can open up as many tabs as you want. And if you click the little plus button that's way up there at the top right, it'll open up a blank tab for you. So tabs are a very handy way for you to uh, be doing lots of different things at the same time. And did anyone have any questions about using the web browser? OK. Um, the next thing I want to go over is setting up your email. So to set up our email, we're going to connect it to our, um, our university email accounts. We're going to click on this settings button at the bottom here. There are a couple different ways you can do it, but this is the way that has worked best for me. We're going to scroll down to the mail, contacts, and calendars button. And we're going to click add account at the top. And our SBU email is Microsoft Exchange. So we're going to click Microsoft Exchange here. And you're going to enter your email address. Mine is jwalker at sbu.edu. Josh, how did you go to the numbers? Oh, okay. Because I, yeah, because I had a one in my password and I couldn't figure out how to go to the numbers. Let me, um, okay. It's at the very bottom left here. Oh, that? Yeah. Okay. It toggles back and forth between the numbers and oh, the letters. Oh, okay. All right. That's helpful to know. All right, so once we enter it in and it connects and it likes everything, um, you can tell it which part of your account you want it to import. And by default, it's going to connect to our email account, our contacts, our calendar, and our reminders. And we'll just do all those. They're all pretty handy. So it's all connected now. Um, now if we go back to our home screen, and we click this mail icon, it will take us to our inbox. And you can read emails and do whatever you need to do. Um, <coughs> Apple's interface for writing emails is not the best in the world. Um, if you want to write a new email, at the top right there, it, I think it's, it's this button to compose a new message. I'll try sending myself an email. Jay Walker, uh, Hopefully, if all goes well, it'll pop up here. It's probably going to take time. That's okay, though. Uh, we'll check it again in a minute after we look around. Oh, here, oh, it didn't like it. I guess I, oh, I typed EF instead of EF. <laughs> so that's okay. It worked and it sent it, so that's all we need to um, So, is everyone able to connect to their email? Is it working for you okay? All right. Um, so scrolling through your inbox and sending a message beyond that um, is pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can also view your calendar. If we go back to our home page, there's this big calendar app right in the middle of mine. And this will show you all the events that you have um, on your SBU schedule for the day. And if I scroll down. I guess I forgot to put this on my calendar. Well, it should have the all your things for today you know, showing up on the calendar, and it should you know automatically sync with your Outlook calendar so that you don't have to manage multiple calendars. So that's a pretty helpful feature to you. Um, 
I wanted to go over with you guys how to use Siri real quick. Siri is Microsoft, or not Microsoft, sorry, it's Apple's um, voice assistant that is built in on the iPhone and the iPad. To get to Siri, you're going to hold down your home button for about two seconds, and um, you're going to press this big microphone button, and then you're just going to ask it something like you'd ask a person. So, what's the weather? And then you click the button again. So it'll um, try to automatically answer your question, and it's pretty smart about knowing what you're asking. What's the weather? Some other things you can ask that are helpful, you can ask it directions. Where's the mall? Where's the mall? Where's the mall? So I found 15 malls that are nearby. Uh, the Battlefield Mall shows up down the list just a little bit. Where's the mall? Is that a ringtone or <laughs> Did you accidentally start the music? No, I was just doing what you said. Now I don't know how to get it off. Oh, that's what Siri wants. <laughs> Take your phone and slam it on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. the hard left So that's, uh, yeah, it, it, it calls things a mall that probably aren't a mall. But it's pretty helpful. Um, if you so if you just ask it something and it doesn't have like an automatic response for how to answer you, it'll sort of just do a Google search. So if we ask it, um, what is a dog? I think it'll pull up a, a Wikipedia sort of page about dogs. So it's, okay, so I did the search here and it brought up a whole bunch of information on dogs for me. Um, if it really doesn't know what in the world you're talking about, it'll just do a Google search for whatever you say, pretty much. If you have an iPhone, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, that's all. The other day I was in Springfield and I was talking to Siri, well, actually my friend, I was driving, so she was talking. <laughs> <laughs> she was talking to Siri, and we wanted to know where a certain place was. In, no, we wanted to know what time a store closed. Mm -hmm. And all we wanted was to find out what the phone number was mm -hmm. from Siri. And instead of just telling us the number, she says, I'm, I, I would like to call it for you if you'd like me to. Hmm. And so she just dialed it right there. I had no idea that That's interesting. She knew who we were. <laughs> yeah, so if you have an iPhone, it, it does a lot more uh, sort of neat stuff, and you can ask it to call people and things like that. So it's not perfect, and it, um, Apple's still working on it quite a bit, but it's, it's a pretty neat feature. Um, you can use the camera to take photos. And, um, the iPad has a very nice camera built in on it, actually. Um, we're going to click on this camera icon at the top of our home page to get to uh, a little photo screen. And we can sort of point it around and take a picture using that big uh, camera icon on the right. So I'm going to take a snapshot of this. Um, there's on the, the far right, there's a little circle with the camera. Yeah. You press that and it'll snap the picture. Yes. Okay, we had to take pictures yesterday with an iPad in class, and I was having trouble, like, wherever I would hold it, my fingers were always in the picture. Oh, okay. What's the best way to, like, hold it? Um, Landscape. The little hole where the photo is being shot is up here, so basically you just don't want to oh, hold it up there. Okay. So, if you hold oh, it upside down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're holding it upside down, it's probably going to be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh, um, oh, sorry. Does yeah. anyone have a question? No. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, if you press this little flip icon at the bottom, and I'll show you once this connects again. Down here at the bottom right, there is a little you know, flipsy looking button. If you press that, it will, yeah, it'll let you uh, use the front camera instead of the back camera. And I like to look at myself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. 
<laughs> so if you want to take video with the iPad, at the bottom right, there's a little switch that shows you know, the camera on one side and the video camera next to it. So you just slide that to the side, it will go into video mode, and you can press that big red button there to start recording. And I think you're in here. So now I am recording video. Hi, everybody. And you press it again to stop. And um, to view all the fun stuff that we've been doing, we're going to go back to our home screen by pressing the home button. And where there's the photos. Here it is, at the top, photos. And here's some of the pictures I took of all the lovely people here. And um, our video is here as well, so you want to watch that. So now I'm recording video. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay, that's enough. <laughs> uh, all right, so you can um, upload your videos and all that stuff to YouTube if you want to at the, I don't know why it's, it's blown up like this. It's showing me how Well, it, it's not showing it up here, but at the top right, when you're at the screen where you view a photo or a video, um, it has a little, this little arrow icon uh, right next to the trash can. And when you press that, it opens up a menu to either email the video or the photo or to put it up on YouTube. And um, I'm not going to put it up on YouTube right now because I have to log into a YouTube account and everything. It take a lot of time. Um, but it is pretty handy. Um, so that way, the, the only other way to get the videos off your device is to plug it into your computer and go through iTunes. And iTunes is kind of a mess to use. And we'll go through it a little bit soon here. Um, so it, it's, it's a lot easier if you can just sort of email yourself the videos. Um, there are some apps you can use to take interesting pictures. Uh, for instance, there's this photo booth app on our home screen that comes built in, and it lets you take sort of carnival pictures of yourself. Um, it has these, I guess, nine lenses up here, and you just click the one you want, and you can take an embarrassing photo of yourself. Um, and you can, yeah, it'll go back into your photo feed that we were just looking at. And you can send it however you want to, the same way you can send any other photos. Um, and there are a lot of other apps that you can download to manipulate your photos and things like that, but we don't have time to go into that for today. Um, the last thing I want to go over in this part of our session is uh, connecting to iTunes so that we can uh, get the material off of our device. And it's not always fun, but we'll do it in. So I need to grab my cable real quick here. Apologize. You should have this little USB cable that came with your iPad. And you're going to plug part of it into the bottom of your iPad or iPhone. the other part into your computer, and I think that this computer is going to tune to this. So you're going to start iTunes up on your computer. You all probably won't be able to follow along with this because I doubt iTunes is installed on those. Um, once you're in iTunes, it's going to take a minute to recognize your iPad or your iPhone, but when it does, it's going to appear over here on the side. Josh, also on Windows, you can go into the computer icon and you can access stuff that way as well. It's not. Yeah, it shows it's not. Up. Bye.
So everyone else in here is, is going to be able to stay in order. Well, um, I wanted to go over some apps and some other types of things that you can use in the classroom um, with your iPhone or iPad. And one of the first ones I'm going to point out is this thing that I've been using here. Um, it's called an Apple VGA connector, and it lets you connect your device uh, to a projector like I'm doing right now. And it's very handy and it's pretty much essential if you want to actually do any presenting with your device. It costs about $25 and you can buy it through Apple's store. Um, probably easiest to do is just to buy it online. I don't, I don't know if there's an Apple store in Springfield or not. They do some in Walmart. Oh, they do some in Walmart. Oh, okay. also systems. So what's it called? It's called an Apple VGA connector. So it's pretty much essential if you want to show things in your classroom. And uh, the next thing is this app called Prezi that we sort of installed earlier. I wanted to show you guys. Um, we're going to, if you haven't, go ahead and install Prezi. I'm going to show you how to use it. Um, you can install it through the App Store. Um, it's called Prezi, and here's our icon for it. We're going to click it. And you're going to have to log into your Prezi account. Um, you're going to have to create a Prezi account through their website, or you can also do it through your device. Um, when you go to Prezi.com, they have this very nice little interface to make basically PowerPoint presentations. Um, and they, they have a lot of cool transitions and effects and things like that. And you can make them online, and then you can um, hold them up on your device and show them to your class or at a conference or wherever you need to do it. So I want to show you guys a sample Prezi that I made here. Well, well, we'll come back to Prezi at the end because I don't want to make you all sit through that part. Um, but basically, when you use Prezi, it's just like showing an interactive PowerPoint. 
uh, on your device and it can be sort of an engaging thing to do in the classroom. There are a few sample prezies that are built in on here and I'll show you uh, some of those real quick just to give you an idea of what a prezi looks like. Okay, so we'll use this uh, Happy Thanksgiving prezi, I guess. It's got a dot <coughs> Okay, so I think it's finished installing, and then you can just sort of tap to the side uh, to start going between the slides. And it's going very slow because they have so many pictures in here. But you can see it has these nice transition effects. Um, the whole thing sort of has a big visual continuity, and you can pinch to zoom in and out and sort of get a big overview of the whole presentation and you can sort of click around to navigate to different slides. This is a really bad example because it's, it's, there's so much junk in here that it's so slow. But um, it, it's a nice way to show slides in a class. Another thing uh, you can use that's helpful is SkyDrive. Um, are you all familiar with SkyDrive that we have here at the university? It's a place online where you can store your files and you can pull them off from any computer. Um, if you log into my SBU, there's a little SkyDrive link, and you can get to it through that. Um, if you have files that you put on SkyDrive, you can access them on your device through the SkyDrive app. And I'll, um, this can be another helpful way if you want to show like a Word document or a PowerPoint in your classroom. So I'll log in real quick and show you. Okay, so here are all the files that I've uploaded to my SkyDrive, and you can load them just by clicking them, and um, I'll go to this Word document, and you can't actually edit the documents when you go into SkyDrive on your device. Um, you can only view them. It does do a good job of uh, preserving the formatting that you put in, but um, I'll go real quick to a PowerPoint presentation, and show you that it does not really uh, do transitions and it doesn't have all the effects that you would have if you viewed a PowerPoint on your computer. So here's our sample PowerPoint and what it looks like. See, it, it just kind of makes it a series of pages. This was supposed to be a sliding transition. This is supposed to be a box type transition and a bunch of different transitions. And they, they don't work when you use SkyDrive, um, but at least you can present your slides if you're in a pinch. Um, so SkyDrive is, is sort of a helpful way to show documents uh, up on the big screen if you need to, or if you need to read some of your documents when you're on the go. A few of the other apps that we installed earlier, uh, one of the most interesting is TeamViewer, and uh, we have TeamViewer installed on all of our computers, at SBU, as far as I know, and uh, we also have TeamViewer. Um, it, it, it's available for you to download for free and put on your computer at home. And then if you download TeamViewer onto your computer and then get the app for it, you can access that computer from your iPad. Um, so you can actually like go into the computer and use the computer remotely. So we're going to go into our TeamViewer app, and it's going to after we get through this whole tutorial. It's going to ask us for a TeamViewer ID. I'll show you real quick how to get that ID when you are at your office computer. Um, if you go down to this little taskbar area, you'll see this little blue circle icon TeamViewer. And if you right click it, you can go to Show TeamViewer. And then you get this uh, ID and password. So you'll need to write these down. So I'll write mine down real quick. So I can switch between the screens here. Oh, 
Okay.